Ja, beginnen wir. Hurra. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat so at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Ja. So einfach kann man And then one day, werden. something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No What? one showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Ah. So, jetzt muss ich nur was schauen. Habe ich den Namen eh eingegeben? The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Was? Kann ich hier eigentlich irgendwas machen? Weiß man da was? Kann ich da reinzoomen? Ah, ich kann... Sandy würde was nicht machen. Was? I hate Mondays. Ach so, denk dich rein, du meinst, weil ich... Weil ich ja nur Orders mache, oder? Weil ich ja quasi nichts... Äh, habe ich also auch kein Gehirn. Das heißt, ich gehe einfach... Faszinierend. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Ja, jetzt muss ich nur noch wissen, wo der Meeting Room ist. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. Das ist so gut. Das ist so gut. Das ist so eine Verarsche von all den allen, allen Spielen, wo du einfach sinnlos da überall herumgehst und du hast das schon im Kopf wie ich jetzt. Ich schaue überall danach, ob irgendwas zum Aufheben ist, weil irgendwas könnte ja wichtig sein. Es ist super. Es ist super. Es ist einfach super. Ich bin doch geprägt von allen Spielen und gleichzeitig zeigt dir das Spiel, dass alles komplett blunzen ist. When das Stanley ist came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Schönes Blatt. Ja. Das ist der Meeting Room, oder? Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Hm. 
Make sure your slide has a slick blue graphic in the header. This will ensure everyone is unique. You must. You most of all. Number of slides on this slide. This is genial. What is hot? Gleich beleidigt. Ja. Die Tür geht sogar mal auf. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Because the boss knows that what the boss says goes if the goes if the boss suffered losses, then that's what the boss choose. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. What? Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Whoops, nope, uh, never mind. Stanley actually got back into the elevator and went back up. Silly me. Why did uh -huh. Stanley do that when he knew that it would just lead back to his boss's office? Well, that's a great question. I just can't wait to find out. Siehst, da wird das Spiel, da habe ich jetzt verwirrt das Spiel. Mit dem hat keiner gerechnet. Ja, mit dem hat echt keiner gerechnet. Ha! Ich sehe nichts. Ich sehe nichts. Kann, kann ich hier? Here we are, Stanley. It's your boss's office. Exactly the way it was before you got onto the elevator. It's still just exactly what it is. What a decision you've made to come up here and look at the office again. 
This has fleshed out the plot of the story in new and fascinating ways I could have never anticipated. <laughs> keen eye for storytelling that you have. An incisive, rapid fire of critical plot points, one after the other, weaving a rich tapestry of uncompromising narrative. Wow. <laughs> I'm bolted to the edge of my seat. Ich muss sagen, der, 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 der Sprecher ist genial. Ich mag auch seine Stimme, die ist super. Na gut. Offensichtlich war das sinnlos. Na gut. Wir fahren doch wieder nach unten. Incredible. Now he's getting back into the elevator and going down again. Ladies and gentlemen, how does he keep coming up with all of this? Zum Geier. Surely this time Stanley will walk forward into the spooky corridor, won't he? Ich könnte es einfach noch einmal rauffahren, vielleicht dreht er dann komplett durch. Das wäre unlustig. Did you think we were going to go forward down the spooky corridor? No. It's time once again to go back up in the elevator. I can't even begin to grapple with what might be up there. Is it the boss's office again? Or what if it's the boss's office this time? The suspense is killing me. Ich verwirre das Spiel jetzt. So. Ja, ja. Oh my god. It's the boss's office. So okay. <sighs> This absolutely changes everything for me. Give me a time out here for a minute while I process this. Okay, I'm ready. I'm prepared to embrace this, this revelation and to move forward with... No! No, wait! No! I need more time to process. I have fully come to terms with it. I have made space in my worldview for this astonishing new reality. As before, I turn to your expert eye for gripping narrative, Master Stanley. Genial, oder? Na gut. Das Spiel weiß alles. Er hat damit gerechnet, dass ich nochmal rauf war. Genial. Aber jetzt, oder? Jetzt, jetzt gehen wir runter, oder? Going back down in the elevator. How did I not anticipate it? I mean, sure, now it's obvious, but you have to understand that 30 seconds ago, this kind of thing never existed before. I had no chance to even anticipate it. That's just how revelatory Stanley's decision making is. A breath of fresh air in a landscape of storytelling that has grown stale and repetitive. Naja, ist. Ich auch nicht. Geben wir uns halt geschlagen. Gehen wir halt da runter. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Was bitte was? Ray of Hope, Servus. Äh, Stanley. Irgendwas Parabel Ultra Deluxe Version. Ein Spiel offenbar, wenn ich hier vor die Trailer angeschaut, ein Spiel offenbar, das alle anderen Spiele verarscht. Selbst die Trailer waren geil, wie sie es quasi... Sehr, wie sie... Ah, 2, 8, 4, 5. Warte, dann gehen wir nochmal zurück. 
Jetzt werde ich ihn verwirren. Probieren wir es nochmal. Ich glaube, jetzt sagt er nichts mehr, oder? Hm. You know what? I just thought of something. Hold on, let's stop for a moment. Don't you realize? It's the anticipation, Stanley. Was? You and I, we have no way of knowing what will be at the top of this elevator. But the suspense, the agony of waiting mm -hmm. and anticipating and having to guess, that's the real thrill. Oh, I simply don't want to let that feeling go. It's so precious, so fleeting. Why don't we take this elevator ride nice and slow? <laughs> this is so good. Isn't this so much more exciting? You know, Stanley, it seems like nowadays the only thing that audiences want is to be shocked as loudly and frequently as possible. They want big, explosive moments flung right in their faces from the very That's moment that things get started. But where's the tension? Where's the trust in the audience to build a slow and nuanced appreciation for the story, the characters? Why aren't we given time to imagine the surprises? To have to think and to anticipate and then to marvel at the eventual reveal. This is storytelling, Stanley. What you and I are doing right now. This is the most exciting narrative to be developed in years. And it's really all because of you. You're the one who took this bold step of revisiting the exact same locations over and over. Truly, I mean it. This is unique and different. It's not like anything else out there. You see, I want stories that surprise me, Stanley. I want to have to think. I want to be engaged and not pandered to. We're being fed such unimaginative drivel all the time and we all know it, which is why we're so starved for content that makes us feel sharp and vital and alive. That's why people like you so much, Stanley. Because you're not afraid to spit in the face of tradition. You're a real you know? People look up to you. Which is why, though I didn't know when to spring this on you, but, well, I've gathered a little press conference for you. So that you can talk about your work and your storytelling and your life. Yes, I know you're not much for the public eye, but I thought it would especially mean a lot to the people who have been following you from the beginning. They really look up to you, Stanley. I don't know if you realize the impact you have on them. This is the kind of gesture that might leave a tremendous impact on them for the better. Oh good, we're here. What? Ha, Black Sun? Ja. ja. Sie haben uns den roten Teppich ausgerollt. Damit hat er nämlich nicht gerechnet. Na gut, sie hat natürlich damit gerechnet, aber... Okay, the room where we're holding the press conference should be just around the corner here somewhere. What's hell? <coughs> That is human being, all tricks revealed. How we did it, the pyramids. The guy who went to Mars? What? Stanley, live on stage. Well, peace, baby. Ah, yes, What? here it is, just through this door. Oh, sure. Storyteller. Stanley reveals all in his new book. The stage. All right, are you ready? I've told them you're going to speak a little bit about the nature of surprise in storytelling. And what it means to craft a truly unpredictable narrative. Oh, don't worry. You'll do great. Just be yourself and speak from the heart. I'm, I'm really proud of you, Stanley. Okay. It looks like they're ready for you. Go get them. You two came up with pizza. Und man kann hier... Die 27 ist nicht doch die Nummer gewesen von meinem... Hä? Congratulations, Stanley. Remember where you came from. From the all. So there was. Das ist mein Buch scheinbar, das ich geschrieben habe. Up again, down again. 
Das ist ja urgeil, der Entwickler hat quasi schon das mit eingerechnet, dass jemand fünfmal rauf und runter fährt und hat das gleich als Buch. Das ist wunderschön. Was für ein Spiel, bitte. Break a leg, Champ. My true love. Your wife from the apartment ending. Was? Welcher? Was? Apartment ending? Was? I love the way you ride the elevators. <lacht> ist das nicht geil, bitte? No one tells stories the way you do. God give Tiger. Okay. Ja, yeah. I'm the storyteller. Als ich den Lift nahm und rauf und runter fuhr. Okay. Ja! Aber das beste Ende! Nein, keine Ahnung. Muss ich sagen, das war urgeil, bitte. Ich war auf der Bühne, bitte. Das ist, glaube ich, noch niemandem gelungen. Beim ersten Versuch nehme ich mal an. Kein Mensch hat mir den Aufzug rauf und runter und das mehrmals. Aber wieso sind wir jetzt wieder hier? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Oh no, oh no, 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 not again. I won't be part of this. I'm not going to encourage you. I'm not going to say anything at all. I'm just going to be patient and wait for you to finish whatever it is you enjoy doing so much in this room. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. But Stanley Aha. just couldn't do it. He considered <laughs> the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close you. automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief, Stanley felt, to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? 
And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was, in fact, a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself, too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. What the fuck? Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. What? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, it's for bus. just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. <laughs> then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. The fuck? Did you have some fall? Aha, man fuckt das so immer wieder da an. Äh, was ich mich frage ist, da war ein Auto unten, aber da war kein Ausgang für das Auto. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Man, this is just too much. What the fuck? 
Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Nein, sicher nicht. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting so he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why did he take that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment oh, for no reason it. at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet? Also, das ist, das ist, das ist, das sich jetzt bei Hart? close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't Aha, be real. das heißt, da habe ich das Spiel jetzt quasi he came to the im Sinne von in die, in die on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the word. Da waren sie jetzt nicht so gescheit, das Neues zu machen. Dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real ah. job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing okay, das heißt, er will, dass ich da nicht runtergehe, sonst will mich in den Wahnsinn treiben, oder? Very odd. I wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams. The truth was that of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Aber Let vielleicht, me go back to my mal job. Let me anders. continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Okay. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. Ja, das haben wir schon. Können wir das irgendwie auslassen? Ah! 
But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled <laughs> through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed head. dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career. And by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Gut, wir gehen nicht mehr runter. Geh mal in das Boss Office. Gib den Code ein. All of his co-workers were da unten weiter. Mach mal da unten weiter. Mach mal da unten weiter. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oder soll ich noch mal runtergehen? Nein, wenn ich das noch mal nicht schicke. Wieso gehe ich immer auf die linke Tür? Wieso gehe ich nie zur rechten? Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Das ging vorher nicht. <lacht> Indoors, Monthly, Beim, Ruffs. Achso, ich soll ja ins Office gehen. Vielleicht sollte ich ins Office gehen. Oh mein Gott! Es gibt so viele Möglichkeiten. Ich bin verwirrt. Stepping into his manager's office. Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What could it mean? Stanley wondered aloud to nobody. He began wildly tearing huh? through papers on the boss's desk, pulling books off the shelf, looking behind paintings, desperate for clues to his situation. But his attention was caught by a keypad behind the boss's desk. What could its purpose be? In fact, this keypad guarded the terrible secret that lay buried below his feet. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly Amazing. opened passageway. Jetzt gehen wir unten weiter, oder? Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, but of course, Stanley thought better of it and realized he's simply nope, still on board with death. Will ich da rein? Wahrscheinlich, oder? Lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out?
nicht lesen. Now the monitors jump to life. Their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really easy, been girl? under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to <laughs> accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? What? It's so dunkel. But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Soll ich hier machen? Was ist hier los? Was ist das hier? Es ist so dunkel. Laufen Sie gut. Aber nicht zu lang. Es Ich ne Piss doch drücken. Ich, ich, ich verstehe nicht. Wieso ist das alles so riesig? And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation. To put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Also, doch. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? He had won. He had ja. defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had Stimmt. his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was perhaps the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door.
Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Eat the game. Achievement unlocked. <laughs> Even now, Stanley's office was a distant memory. What did it look like? There was a computer, perhaps, and a painting. Was it a painting or a photo? He could no longer recall. Huh? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's... Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. No. Da bin ich gespannt. Wo das hinführt. Oh! Jawohl, klassische Fahrstuhlmusik. Ehrlich. Ja, ich kann auch mit Controller spielen. The Stanley. Wie lange fahrt der Lift? Der fährt gar nicht, oder? Das ist einfach nur Fahrstuhlmusik und ein Fake-Lift. Gott! <lacht> The moment he entered his manager's office, Stanley froze in his tracks. Not a living soul anywhere. Could he really be... Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy. So he Aha. relaxed for a few moments with some calming new age music. Between peaks, Kurt. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. 
Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom is. Wir jetzt die Power einschalten. Was schon was dann passiert? This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would... Oh, Stanley, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Oh, Stanley... I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, What's... eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say, um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going, what all this means. I barely know where to start. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are? A moment of solace before you're obliterated? All right, I'm in a good mood. You're gonna die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I this erased does. them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance huh? of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control the rest away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go-around will be huh? even better. Oh, my goodness. Good. Only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. Ah! You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? These are precious additional seconds, Stanley. Time doesn't grow on trees. Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones, or maybe this big red button, or this door. Everything, anything, something here will save me. Why would you uh, think that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One solved? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> Stanley. 
You're in for quite a disappointment. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. To see you made humble. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here, just you being blown to pieces. Will you cling desperately to your frail life, or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice? Make it count, or don't. It's all the same to me, all a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say, happily ever up. Okay. Einschalten ist wohl nicht. Einschalten ist wohl nicht. A soft wind blew outside and perhaps rain started. And if it did, it stopped shortly after. Stanley hoped that he would one day see weather. <laughs> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay, I think we all know the drill by now. Blah blah blah. Dark secrets, the keypad, Stanley pushes ah. some buttons. Oh hey, look, it's a new passageway. Kill Gefällt mir. So, dann probieren wir jetzt einmal die, den Notausgang da unten. Bin mir nicht sicher, ob man das aufhalten kann, sonst die Explosion. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door Nein. that read Mind Control Facility. Although this passageway had the word Escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Was? Warum? So jetzt ist der The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Was? Wieso? Wir laufen einfach davon, da gibt's keinen Tod. Oder doch? Hä? Aha, oh shit. Na ja, kein Tod. Easy. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that Was? his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps huh? his death was of no great loss. So nein, nein, nein. And willingly accepted this violent nein. end nein. brief and shallow nein. life. Ja. Farewell, Stanley. Farewell, Aha. Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated. Nein. As the machine crushed every bone in his body, Nein. killing him instantly. Nein, Lady. 
Nein, eben nicht. Aha. Oder? Oder doch nicht? Was? And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? What? Dieser Plan zeigt das Spiel vom Spielanfang. Ja, das ist alles geplant gewesen. Es war wichtig, das Spieltempo in diesen ersten Abschnitt richtig einzustellen. Dieser Kräuter wurde verschoben und verändert, um sie zwischen. Ja, ne, ich. Ah. Ach, nicht rein. The fuck. Ah! Okay, cool. Aha. LOL Modellentwurf Credits Ein Museum Zum Teufel. Im Driving die Stimme ist jetzt hier im Verlauf. Now look closely, Stanley. See how it's impossible for the player to do anything in this room. Perfect example of poor level design, textbook mistake. It's the kind of thing you'd pick up on intuitively if you had even the most fundamental understanding of good and Where bad were games all of his co-workers? But of course, you oh, being you, you know, you'll probably spend the next hour trying to solve it. They're throwing a surprise for him for yeah. all his then button pushes. Does that sound plausible, 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 plausible to you? Das habe ich noch nicht gesehen. Hä? Wie komme ich wieder raus? Computer, der ist da nicht. Warum? Ich nicht. Was? Was ist das bitte?
verwirrt mich. War schon eine geile Idee. Aber wie komme ich hier jemals wieder raus? Schlachtfeld? Was für ein Schlachtfeld? Für was? Aliens kämpft, das echt sollte empfindungsfähig werden. Das ist viel zu witzig und zu kurz gedacht. Achso, Leute, wie. Ha, lol. Jetzt Ende, das haben wir schon. Da war ich nicht. Wie komme ich wieder raus? Ist das jetzt quasi die Verarsche, dass ich was gemacht habe, was blöd war? Und jetzt komme ich nicht mehr weg. Oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save those two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time... How wonderful. Stanley was alone. Finally. This is great, he thought to himself. This is what I've wanted all along. I got what I wanted. Oh, new content? What does that mean? New content. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes. 
truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. My God, what is this? Lagerhalle or something? But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one yeah. has to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good <laughs> job, Stanley. Everyone <laughs> thinks you are very powerful. <laughs> All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. New oh, content? New content? What does that mean? New content. Hello, and thank you for playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. As you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, delighting audiences the world over. Herrlich. Please, step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh, well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. Yeah. Was is the new content? Okay, so far it's an elevator. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. Um, okay. Um, is it broken? What's going on here? Should we... Should we be moving somewhere or... Uh, oh, here we go. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. Hmm. Hmm. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, mostly tedious. It's as if the... Um, oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. New content. A jump circle? What? All right. All right, let's see. It's... The jump circle? We can spring in. Neuer content. Nur da drinnen. Oh, new content aus. Is... is that it? Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? Goodness. Another elevator. Stanley, I have to say, initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? If this is new content, then I could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 hours of new content right there. Hell, I could count to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, now with over a thousand hours of new content. And if... Oh, wait. <laughs> There's more. Very good. Yes. I knew there had to be something else. Let's see it. 
I'm ready for whatever it is. That's it? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You see, Stanley? This is what happens when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no reason other than to make an easy dollar. And don't get me started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's achievements, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says, Test achievement, please ignore. What quality assurance department signed off on this? I'm infuriated and I'm offended, and I, I intend to find these people on Twitter and hold them personally <laughs> accountable. <sighs> it's my fault, Stanley. I built up too much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived up to such expectations. If you're still with me, why don't we just reset the game and we'll try to get back to what the Stanley parable is really about. No frills, no gimmicks. Just you and me having a great time together like always. Yeah. What do you say, friend? Find ich super. Find ich super. Was? Schaut anders aus. Das sieht wohl 